Good morning. Welcome to Mary Grace TV. It's it's a beautiful day here in Central Virginia. Uh, we are not in the earthquake zone, so we're just uh, rocking and rolling on solid ground. And I am Mary Grace, the host and founder of this channel. And I have with me today a, a guest that I, I know, I just know that you're going to love. And it is uh, my friend Stacy Whited. She is one one quarter of the flyover conservatives uh if you've heard of their channel and as you're coming in here just just let's just give it a second i want people to share comment follow like do what you need to do to let people know we're on air we did send an email so if you're on my email list you would have gotten that email and known that we are going live so stacy whited is like i said one quarter of the flyover conservatives she and her husband david have a show that they do on their own channel, on multiple channels across the internet. They have their own website. And, and they started this out of the, really out of the 2016 election, just kind of talking to other people about what, what was going on and what God was showing them and how to approach all of these events from a Christian conservative viewpoint. And, and so it's really grown. And if you follow the Reawaken tours, you should know the name flyover conservatives because they are part of every single event that Clay Clark and General Flynn have done. And, and that's actually how we met is through that and then through one of the podcaster workshops that Clay Clark had. So Stacy, welcome to the show. It's it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for taking your Saturday morning to be with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. It's it's really just a pleasure. We've been talking about this for a couple of years now, um, <laughs> and, and we we actually just met up at a um, at a, another conference down in Tulsa, uh, which is pretty much the epicenter of great things that are happening in this country through the work that Clay has done. God has really used him to bring so many people together, as well as General Flynn, and and so I'm I'm grateful that we have these opportunities to connect in person. And I wanted to start, Stacy, by going back a little bit into your story. I was cruising on the internet and I found a bio on Amazon Music. <laughs> <laughs> you were really digging. <laughs> no, it just popped up. I was actually looking for a good profile picture. And, uh, and so this is, so we're digging into the past a little bit because all of my listeners, you you may be familiar with Stacy from her weekly prophetic update and from her uh, show that she does with her husband, David Whited. But did you know that she is a singer songwriter with an album on the country music uh, lexicon? And you can find <laughs> it. You can find it on Amazon Music under Stacy Whited. Uh, and so I read your bio. But what really struck me was and I listened to your music. You have an amazing voice. Oh, thank you. Um, really beautiful. And did you write all your songs? On the album, I didn't. No, we do do okay. songwriting, but um, I ended, ended up partnering with Warner Brothers at okay. that time. And uh, and we used songwriters that they had. It's it's really good. Guys, you should go check it out. It's, it was really cool. Um, I, I'm I'm a singer. I do some songwriting. I saw too. you with your guitar. Yeah. So we need to... We need to join up join forces here um, that would be fun yeah that the singing next, patriots yeah oh my gosh <laughs> next time let's do it let's That'd be do great it. i love to worship i actually put up a worship set last week so you can check that out oh, and for anybody that, out. that missed it i did a worship set on last saturday night uh so if you did miss it just go check that out on all my channels um so i wanted to ask you though something specific in your bio, which is pretty extensive on Amazon Music, you talked about you and David got married young, mm -hmm. and you uh, you had a dream of doing music, of of making an album, of you know, you were in Nashville, and then you had some health problems that derailed you, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that because it was really hard for you and David, based on what you said in the bio. And we're in a time where people are experiencing hardship at levels that maybe they never even expected. Mm -hmm. Would you be open to sharing a little bit about that experience that that you you guys went through? Um, 
because everybody's looking at you now and they're thinking, oh my gosh, they're amazing. They have this amazing platform. They, they've been really successful in business, but it didn't start that way. And you've hit a lot of speed bumps along the way. Can you just tell us a little bit about your story? Sure, sure. Uh, so David and I, we've actually known each other since the seventh grade. So a long time. We were very young and we got married at 20 and then had our son Colton right away who produces the Flyover Conservative show. Yes. Um, and then a couple of years later, I actually got pregnant with our daughter, Avery, um, who's the fourth person of the Flyover Conservatives, yes. does all of our graphics and booking and all of that. Um, but when I got pregnant with her, I was really sick. I was cutting hair at the time. And um, they found out, I was kind of in and out of the hospital. They found out I was allergic to the hormone that she was releasing. So that's a really wow. bad position. I'm pregnant, but allergic to basically the, the hormone of the baby. Yeah. And um, so my body was fighting it off. And, you know, at the time we were only 23 and David was working uh, full time. I was working full time. And so when I was sick, we were in trouble financially. Um, I couldn't work. Uh, they, they had tried some med medications and I was actually allergic to all of the medications wow. that they had. And so it was really bad. Uh, it was a very, very hard time. We were living out in Colorado Springs at the time and all of our family was in Kansas. So we didn't have that support either. So David ended up um, working over a hundred hours a week. He took on, he kept his full-time job and then took on a bunch of part-time jobs as well. And um, at 23, we just realized how vulnerable we were. And, um, and so it was a, it was a very low place as far as just financially, mm -hmm. you know, because bills kept coming in, um, yeah. 23, you're very stressed. We had, you know, a two year old son and now, you know, I'm pregnant with our next child. And so it was, it was really, really tough. Um, it was interesting because they ended up putting a permanent IV in and that's how I ate for several months. And they basically had no hope for me other than they said, we know this is going to last about nine months after nine months, you'll be fine, <laughs> but it's going to be a long road. And that's where wow. faith really came in. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I was, I was praying out for healing. Cause I'm like, God, I, I can't handle this. I was truly vomiting constantly. Um, I had an IV pull and a, and a throw up bucket right beside me. And that was what my day looked like that our son was three or two. And he had to go to the daycare because I couldn't take care of him. So David was, you know, um, working all of these hours between jobs, he would go get him from the daycare, bring him home, put him to bed and go to his next job. Wow. Uh, because I literally, I, I couldn't do anything on IV pull with a two-year-old, you know? Um, and so at that time and no support system because our family lived in a different state. Mm -hmm. And so at, at 23, we were like, okay, number one, it drew, really drew David and I closer together, uh, because, you know, we were depending on each other, but also our faith in God really grew a lot during that time as well. And this whole thought of, uh, where does, where does your finances, where does your, um, support come from, you know, because he had all of these jobs, but really it is all found in the foundation of God. Um, and so it was just an interesting time in our life. It, what's awesome is at four months into the pregnancy, um, I, you know, I was obviously very sick. Mm -hmm. I was, um, thinking I, you know, I have another five months of this. What am I going to do God? And I cried out to the Lord and I said, God, I can't do this any longer. Like, please help me. I need your help, please. And I was instantly healed. Wow. Not, not like, you know. A few yeah. weeks later, literally at that time, I got up out of bed. Um, I was able to um, take my own shower. I hadn't taken a shower by myself in a long time. I took my own shower. I ended up calling David at one of his jobs. And I'm like, David, you're not going to believe this. I said, um, I, I, mean, I feel great. I told him the story and I said, I'm so hungry. I think I'm going to eat cereal. And then I think I, I want some Chinese food. Those are not things you would ever eat when you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> cereal and Chinese food. Yeah, milk. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I ended up ordering it and I was instantly healed. And the rest of the pregnancy, um, I was fine. I had no problems. And that's where like my whole faith, my whole foundation in that changed in that God is not just far away. He's right here. He mm -hmm. hears our prayers and he still heals today. It's not just something that you read about in the Bible. Right. Because I personally experienced it myself. Yeah. And so yeah. Li life for us changed after that point. That's amazing. Now, had you you were a Christian at that time. Did you grow up in a Christian home? I did. Um, yep. But well, not in one that actually talked much about the gifts of the spirit or okay. or those kind of things. Um, 
So I grew up in a denomination uh, that was more like the, the, those kind of things, the Holy Spirit and all of that was more Old Testament, mm -hmm. um, but not much talked about in the New Testament. Obviously, Holy Spirit is talked a lot about in the New Testament, but not one we really uh, talked about in our church. And yeah. so um, I grew up Christian, but not really believing it. Like if I would pray for somebody, I would pray for, you know, just give them comfort or God, if it's your will, but not... Right you know, believing in something to actually happen. Sure. Yeah. So what, was that a, a pivotal turning point for you in your faith? It was uh, definitely, it was huge. <laughs> it was yeah. huge. And what's interesting too, is um, learning to keep the healing because um, the enemy, anytime that something happens like that in your life, the enemy always tries to come back, you know? And so understanding authority and continuing to claim I've been healed in Jesus name, because, mm -hmm. um, he, he always does try to come back to attack a victory that you've had in your life. And so understanding you've got to hold your ground. No, I've been healed and continue to have faith in that. That's so good. I was actually just going to ask you that because the Bible says by his stripes, we are healed and it is, it's done. It's finished. Yes. And, and so there, the, you know, the mind, the heart is deceitful above all things. And so the enemy, I, I believe really does come in and try to get you to doubt. And for example, you know, you may have people saying, this is impossible. This is not something that you can just be healed from things like that, right? The voices of the world sure, get at you, yep. all of the doubt. And then the, people want to have evidence. We have to run tests. Uh, you're not really healed. You're just having a good day. All of those things that sure. can come into your mind, right? And this is where the discipline, the mental and emotional discipline really comes into play as a Christian and walking in, I guess, as being a grown-up Christian, as mm -hmm. it were. You know, when Paul says that that you need to be eating meat and not milk. Right. And, I, and I think that that is a big part of what we are seeing, e even in our current times, that I think that God is giving people opportunities to go from an emotional based, um, maybe distant faith that that belonged to their family or their tradition to bringing it home to who we are personally and our personal relationship with Christ. Are you seeing that happening with with your show and and with the interactions that you're having? Are you seeing people being challenged to walk? into greater maturity in their faith? Absolutely. You know, God did not cause um, the COVID pandemic, but he can always <laughs> use it. So God yeah. is so creative. He can use every situation, everything that's used for bad, he can turn it around for good. And we've really found that, you know, you talked about the Reawaken America event yeah. and we've been at all but one. So that's 20 some events, you know, since 2021 yeah. um, that we have participated in. And we always hold a meet and greet where we have the opportunity to meet our listeners, but as well as speakers that are on the stage. So a lot of people come, some of them, you know, 500 to a few thousand will attend our meet and greet. And so we've done that at 20 some events all across the United States. And something that's been consistent over these last few years is we hear over and over again, um, they, they either met Jesus for the very first time, mm -hmm. they've rededicated their life to Jesus, or they've developed this relationship and they're reading their Bible at home. So maybe people that have been in church for years, but never read their Bible at home, just what they got from the sermon on Sunday, that has changed where people are now taking um, responsibility for their own faith. They're not depending on their family, like you said, or a tradition, or even their pastor or their priest. They are depending on, okay, I have a relationship. It's up to me because, you know, your spouse isn't going to stand in front of God for you. Your parents are going to stand in front of God for you. And mm -hmm. your pastor's not going to stand in front of God for you. You will stand, you know, in front of God. And it's that personal relationship that he's after. Yes. Yes. That that's so awesome. I want to take a minute here to celebrate. Lisa on YouTube is saying that her 16 year old daughter has chosen Jesus. Yay. And that's the her, best decision ever. <laughs> her prayers are answered. That that's just awesome. <laughs> that is. Where the angels are celebrating. It's it's wow. <laughs> that's that's amazing, especially this generation. Yes. Uh, your daughter Lisa is part of the the hero generation. That's something that God showed me. And um and so the her I just want to speak a prophetic word over her because her generation is 
uh, picking up the mantle that the greatest generation took up and then uh, didn't complete. And so it's a really pivotal generation for bringing our nation into greater, more levels of greatness uh, on the world stage. So just, just wanted to encourage you with that. There's more to it, but she's the hero generation. Um, oh, that's so exciting. If yeah. I could add to that as well, yeah, yeah. we're hearing a lot prophetically you know, every week I do uh, the prophetic yes. report going through what's going on. What are the prophets saying? And something that's been consistent, exactly what you just said right there, that this revival, this billion soul harvest that they're talking about, meaning a billion people are going to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, um, that it's going to start um, with that younger generation, yeah. and then it will spread like wildfire everywhere else, but it's going to start with that generation. And so it's so exciting to mm -hmm. hear like what Lisa, you know, just said about her daughter, yeah. because that's going to be what's going to lead this billion soul harvest that's getting ready to hit our, our world. Yes. And, and, you know, one of the things too, that God showed me is that one of the reasons that the, the enemy is, has doubled down so much on abortion uh, is when, you know, when we saw the, um, it was New York that passed the full term abortion and, mm -hmm. and celebrated it a couple of yes. years ago, yes. the Lord showed me, he said, you know, the reason that this is that, that they're pushing so hard is because these children that are in the womb have such a great anointing and they're going to be walking in miracles and signs and wonders from birth without wow. even really being taught. And, it, it's that was a, a word that I published a while back. Some of you guys may remember it, but it was so powerful because, you know, he just he he very clearly said the enemy can't let them be born because it, it's it's not whether people it, it is about going to heaven, but it's it's also about God's will on this earth and what he wants to accomplish on this earth with his people. And so if the enemy can prevent these new generations from coming forth, it's, you know, millions and millions of people that won't walk into their destiny of what God has for them. And, and that's another reason that we've seen them double down on the transitioning and sure. uh, taking, uh, sterilizing children, because if they can't kill them in the womb, then the next thing is to keep them from reproducing. Or knowing their identity. Yes. I was going to say mm -hmm. to destroy their mental health yep. and to destroy them right at the, at the heart of their identity. Because if mm -hmm. they don't know who they are, then they cannot walk in the freedom of Christ. Yes. So this is, it's very powerful. And, and I, and that's so I, biblical, Mary Grace yeah. as well, what you were sharing there about the abortion, because we saw that with Moses, you know, yes. when they tried to kill all of the babies, you know, because they knew something was coming. We saw the same yeah. thing when Jesus was born. That's why they took him to Egypt. That's why the angel came to Joseph and said, get him out of here. Um, and they got him to Egypt because um, they knew something. They didn't know exactly what it was, but they knew something. And so they were going after the babies uh, to try to destroy anything that they could of a plan that God had. Exactly. And, and I think that people, we, we kind of miss what was really happening at the time of Moses uh, there, there's a there's a tapestry um, in the Vatican uh, in, in Rome that is in the hall. There's a hall of tapestries when you're going to the Sistine Chapel. I don't know if you've ever been there, but there's a big tapestry. It's called the Slaughter of the Innocents. Mm. And it depicts what was happening in Egypt at the time when literally all of the male, male children mm -hmm. under the age of two were, were being genocided. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we, we look at these stories, um, we read the stories, but they don't really connect. And we have tended to sanitize our worldview in, in many ways and to keep ourselves from seeing those types of things. And, and so when you look at that art from the Renaissance period and, and, um, and be, be like around that time, you know, it was, it was so realistic. They, they, mm -hmm. they were literally just painting and sculpting and uh, recreating the Bible um, in very realistic uh, views. And so that has always stuck with me. And we are in that time now. And I think it's important for people to understand that, that the wickedness that we see is not necessarily a sign 
that we're at the end or that God is punishing our nation or the world, we're seeing a manifestation of what has been real since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. The enemy has, has always wanted us dead because we are the image bearers of God. And as Christians, we are the image bearers of Christ. We bear his name. And so there, you know, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What, what else is he going to do? He doesn't have any other vocation. That's what he does. Yep. And he's right? not a creator no. in any way. No. Yeah. You're, you're no. right. And I think we are where we are today. Um, you're right. The evil has always been there. The enemy yeah. has always been there to uh, try to kill, steal, and destroy. We saw it from the Garden of Eden from the beginning yes. you know, of all things. He's like, how can I bring this down? And he is jealous because... Um, you know, I think a lot of times people don't understand the authority that we carry, that we were created in God's image. And so the things that the relationship that we have with God and our choice to actually love God, um, the, the angels don't have that. They don't, they're not, they're not above us. And Satan was very jealous of that. That's why he tries to um, destroy it. That's why he wants mm -hmm. to, a way to maybe uh, take it over you know, that, that he can have that, even though he knows he, he loses in the end, he's trying to everything he can to destroy the creation that God's made. And, um, I don't think if he can keep us from understanding our authority. And I think that's why this book is so important. When we went, it's called the believers yeah. authority. When we went to the very first re it was called reopen America. And I remember April that. Yeah. 2021, Clay gave this book to every person there. And it was written by Kenneth Hagan. Um, and, I think if we understand as believers what our authority is, that, that we know that, okay, so when Adam and Eve were here, they they ha understood the authority, and then they fell because they sinned. And then they lost that authority, and Satan took, took domain over that. But then when Jesus came back, and Jesus um, had the perfect life, he was raised from the dead. He then came back and he gave us that authority. So he took what enemy took, what um, Satan took from Adam and Eve, Jesus took back from Satan. And then he said, go, and you're going to do greater things than I did. He gave us that authority. But a lot of times, if we don't know who we are, if we don't know who God really is as an absolutely good father, um, then we don't really understand how to yeah. walk in that authority. And I think that's why we are where we are as a world because the body of Christ and the church has really gotten watered down. It's very much, uh, you know, lukewarm. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's just so confused. And it's tried to not transform to God's standards, but transform to the world standards. And so if we can take that authority back up, then we can walk and, and we can then say, no, we have authority over this world and this is what it's going to look like. We're partnering with God yeah. to make that happen. And I think there's been a big wake up call all across the world, not just the United States. When COVID hit, I think there was a lot of people that had been lulled to sleep, yes. but now there's a, the world is waking up and they're like, okay, we're not going to do this any longer. And they are now starting to stand up. And what I call like a righteous rebellion, you know, this, mm. I, we will not comply, you know, that whole thought, but it's a really a righteous rebellion that we're seeing happen across the world. I, that That's good. I love that. And uh, for, for people who are not quite sure of what we're talking about with the authority, a good place to start uh, to, to really dig into that is the book of Ephesians, mm -hmm. uh, because Paul explains the authority that, that Stacy just talked about there. Yes. This is so pivotal. And in that book that Kenneth Hagan uh, wrote, he actually talks about praying through the scripture. Uh, all that I do it yes. all the time. I pray over my family, and uh, so Ephesians one and Ephesians three. There, there are two prayers in that book that you you pray for wisdom and revelation, and and for the authority, and also for the strength to comprehend what it is that God has done. Which I think is interesting that yes. we need that we need strength even to embrace and understand. And that strength is the strength that he gives us. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very powerful. And I encourage everybody to read that book because he gives testimonies of lives changing just by praying scripture over your loved ones. Yes. And it's really short. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you can read it very quickly. And then, you know, you dive into it, like yeah. you were just saying about Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, you know, you are diving into it and yep. you're working through it. Yep. But just to read through it, 
it, it's very a very quick read, you know. Yes. And so it is definitely worth the time. It's interesting because we received it. I put it to the side and I didn't read it um, right away. And then we were interviewing Aaron Antis and, um, and he goes, have you read that book? Cause something I said, he said, sounds like that book. And I was like, I haven't read it, but I know where it is. And I actually moved it from uh, where I had put it on the bookshelf over right here in the studio by where I was, but still had not read it. And then I was listening to Amanda Grace one day and she was opening her show and she was talking about the believer's authority. So it took three times, three times. I was like, okay, God, I'll read it. And after I read, it, I was like, this is for this time. I think it's been a couple of years now since I read it, but I was like, uh, for the first time, but I'm like, this is for this time. People need yeah. this book for sure. Yeah. There's another book that I think is a, is a good, uh, accompaniment to that. And it's, um, prayers that shake heaven and earth. Have, do you know that book? No, I don't. Oh, oh okay. So Let me write I, that down. I've talked, I was just looking it up here. Um, Amazon, uh, it is, it, it goes a little bit deeper. Um, but who wrote it? Do you know? I'm just looking it up right now. Okay. Okay. Prayers that shake heaven and earth. It is, uh, Daniel Duval, D-U-V-A-L. Okay. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. I'm just going to hold it up to the screen here. Okay, that's the book. You can get it in digital, but you also, I think the paperback is good because you can, uh, I just have a, a lot of prayers bookmarked. And mm -hmm. there are prayers that go a little bit deeper into spiritual warfare, uh, but he, he also has some very simple prayers, like a morning prayer, an evening prayer, and he explains the the rationale and the basis for the prayers. He he pulls everything from scripture and then basically puts it into prayer form so that you can pray with authority. And that's something that it has been really pivotal for me in my life. He has an advanced book too for people who are really in high level warfare. But I would say start start with Kenneth Hagin's book. And then, and then get the next book, the prayers that shake heaven and earth. This is, it, it's a discipline because the prayers, some of his prayers, they're not super short, mm -hmm. um, but he has prayers for like, for cleansing your home, uh, for, as I said, an evening prayer so that you can pray over your sleep and your property and, and your er, everything that that's in your domain. Um, and things like that. So, so I think as we, and it's helpful too, because sometimes it's easy to get lost and not to know exactly where to pray. We can, we can definitely ask Holy Spirit to direct us, but sometimes to have a prayer that's written down like that, if you go through it slowly and you can make it your own, you can stop and, you know, customize what you're mm -hmm. praying with certain things as you pray and it, if it just becomes part of your routine, then you don't, you, you know, you don't, you don't miss that. So I, that's really I, good. I, I was going to say too, with that, like, um, and making sure it's out loud, you know, that's really yes. important because, um, you know, it's it, two things I wanted to highlight there. One is it's impossible to pray and for something not to happen. And prayer is actually, it should get tangible results. And I want to kind of break that down. What I mean by like that, mm -hmm. you should see results from your prayers. It's not like you're just throwing up something into the sky and hoping that God hears it. Yeah. Um, I'll give an example. Our son Colton, um, he was, I think 19 at the time. So it was, you know, maybe a decade ago or something. Um, he was going on a missions trip. Now we had been on many missions trips. In fact, we were missionaries in Mexico for a couple of years. So, you know, we had done a lot of missions and That's um, why you have the chimeneas. <laughs> exactly. I, I really want one of those. <laughs> They're so great. Yeah, they are great. And he was, and he was going to go to Costa Rica and, uh, there was going to be uh, 30 people that were going and here's the thing, obviously it costs financially. So these, these young kids had to raise the money to be able to do it. Uh, they had to get obviously permission to go. They had to get a passport, all of those different things. But before they actually even started any of that process, the leader of the trip said, um, the first thing you have to do before you can try to get money or anything like that, you have to get 10 intercessors, each one of you, that would be 300 total that are going to be praying for you specifically for that trip. And they're going to be saying, okay, during this time, I will be praying for the trip. I'm going to be leaving mm. in miracles, all those different things. That's the most important. If you do that, the money will come. 
And so each one of them committed and each one of them got 10 intercessors at 300. And of course the money came in, they got their passports. Everything was great. They fly to Costa Rica and um, they were at the church. They were going to minister the first night. And um, they, they were, the church had made like a meal for them. And so there was people serving before they went out to minister. And one of the ladies had this huge growth right underneath of her chin. And Colton, mm -hmm. he said it was probably about the size of a softball. They were wow. all watching this. So a softball. The leader of the trip, she's, she looks at the lady. She taps that the growth underneath the chin. And she says, not on my watch. And right in front of their eyes, that tumor disappeared right in front of their eyes. Like all of them, all 30 of them were watching. Wow. And they were like, whoa. And she, she looked at them, the leader, the leader of the trip, and they were getting ready to go minister. And she goes, there's 30 of us, but there's 300 people interceding. We're going to see so many miracles when we go out uh, to mm -hmm. minister. It's impossible to pray and for something not to happen. And I just want to talk about the significance of prayer, yeah. but not just for yourself. Like that was something when we started flyover conservatives, that it was the four of us family. You know, we had, uh, David and I have worked together since we were 23. We're now 50. So, you know, we have worked together all of our adult life. Um, but when we started flyover conservatives, the spiritual warfare that we experienced, we had never experienced in all of our life and working together all of our life. And we, yeah. we've, been, we've been together 24 hours a day since we were 23 years old. I mean, literally yeah. all the time. And as a family, we'd never experienced that. We were missionaries. We've been in a lot of hard situations before, but the spiritual warfare we experienced when we started this was overwhelming. And we weren't sure that we were going to be able to continue uh, doing this. And I was actually at an event, at a, a prophetic event, and someone came up to me and they said, I feel like your, your ministry is under attack. She said, do you have intercessors? And I know this, I know the importance of prayer. And I said, I, we don't actually, we don't have any intercessors. We have, you know, family members that are, you know, have agreed to pray, but nobody that's like committed. I'm praying for your ministry. And, um, and so she said, I don't want to scare you, but you need to get intercessors, not tomorrow, today, right away. And so we started in, uh, we, we found 11 intercessors that were committed that they would be praying for flyover conservatives. And they have times that they pray, they were committed to it. And uh, they, they started in place and I hadn't told my son, he knew that they were going to be doing it. He didn't know they started. And he came to me and he said, something has changed. He said, this environment feels so much different. He goes, I mean, I can't believe how light I feel. Everything changed. And I said, intercessors started praying for us. And he goes, ah, I felt it. I knew it. <laughs> But it's tangible. You yeah. can actually tell yeah. a difference when you pray. So that's the first thing. Yeah. So you're mentioning that book. And then the second thing I would say about that is that the words that you speak create the world around us. So be very careful Absolutely. with your words. Like if yeah. you don't want something to come to fruition, it's a seed that you plant. So when you say a word, yeah. it's a seed that you plant into the ground that is going to grow. And so you have to be very careful of the words that you speak. That's why you don't want to ever say something that you don't want to see happen. You want to be very careful in the way that you speak about yourself and the way that you speak about your world, all yeah. of those things. Um, but when we speak scripture, when we declare and decree scripture, we are blowing holes in the plans of the enemy. It, I mean, when we do that, there's so much power because again, the words that we speak create the world around us, but we are then speaking the word of God, um, which has life yeah. and power in it. So just knowing that it is so powerful. So if you can even incorporate in the words that you speak scripture, I'm sure like this yeah. book that you're talking about, I mean, nothing can stop you. It's right. so powerful. Yeah. It, it, there's there's so many things we can unpack here because when people when people who understand that going back to the authority people who understand the authority and and our identity in Christ really have no fear right and, and this is what drives the establishment crazy yes and, and this is where I, I it's interesting because when you said that the warfare ramped up. Um, I think we see that around a lot of podcasts around, especially mm -hmm. ones that are faith-based when, when people are broadcasting and going into the airwaves and talking about the political realm, the government realm and the religious realm, because you know why it is, mm -hmm. do you know why it's so offensive is because Jezebel, the spirit, the spirit of Jezebel is operational in the in the political realm and the religious realm. And so, you know, if you just stayed in politics or you just stayed in religion, 
you would only be 50% offending Jezebel. <laughs> but when you when you venture into both. <laughs> into both realms, it, it, Jezebel is big mad. And yes. and it's just and I've seen this, I, you know, I've seen you you see people coming after you who are manifesting that. You, you know what I'm talking about? Sure. And you're like, "Where did that come from?" And it's it, like literally people that want to destroy you. And it, that's a Jezebel spirit. And mm -hmm. we, and we've seen it, you know, president Trump has, has waken sure. it up big time. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about him a little bit because when we talk about prayer, there is a, a Kim Clement prophecy where back way before Trump even talked about running, uh, one of the prophetic words that we now know to be about Trump was that he would be a praying president. Mm -hmm. And just a couple of weeks ago, president Trump appeared on, on video holding up a Bible and saying that America needs to return to prayer. And I think that was a really pivotal moment uh, in, in this year and in this campaign season, for sure. Mm -hmm. He was attacked by Christians. He was attacked by the left. He was attacked by a lot of people because he offended the political spirit and the religious spirit when mm -hmm. he did that. Just like when he held up that Bible at the church in the summer of 2020, those are very, uh, very pivotal prophetic acts that he's doing. And it is, it, it's changing the atmosphere of our nation and it has a ripple effect over the entire world. Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? No doubt about it. Yeah. And you're exactly right with the Jezebel spirit. Um, yeah. and you're right with the combination of the two, um, and I, I think that that whole thing with President Trump, uh, and it also said, and that's in the first second term, you'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And yeah. that's what we have to have, you know, for this country to yes. get out of this. You know, I wear a t shirt um, sometimes on our show and when I'm out and about, but it said, especially when President Trump was still in office, but it said, you know, uh, Trump is my president, Jesus is my savior. Yes. Uh, because he is anointed. Yeah. For this, you know, God anoints people four times and Trump's not my savior, but he is anointed to pull yes. this country out of where it is. And um, and he he still has to be willing. And I think that was what was really big about him deciding to to run again in 2024. Yeah. Uh, that was when he stepped forward and said, I'm willing to actually do this because God mm -hmm. would never force anybody to do anything. God is a gentleman, so he's never going to force it. He's going to offer it. He could give yeah. a prophetic word. Yeah. And then that person has to come in agreement with that word. And so President Trump exactly. did that. And now we're seeing things unfold. You know, there's been a lot of people that have been praying for President Trump to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, understanding that that's part of that next phase that needs to happen. And then another thing is there's a lot of prophetic words around President Trump, specifically from Amanda Grace, about humility, that it's that our country has to be humbled, but it's going to have to start with the, the highest seat, you know, which is the president. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that in President Trump. We're seeing um, that humbling. And through that, um, I mean, we're even seeing it in what he said, you know, about the Bible, all of these different things that we're yeah. seeing come to fruition. Um, and it's exciting to see it in real time because we've heard it prophetically, yeah. but now to be able to witness it. And I always say, truly, this is the best time to be alive, that God chose us for this time that we are here for such a time as this what an honor to be alive right now that he trusts us and i also say that you know it's like god is putting together this puzzle and we're all a piece of that puzzle and we have to bring our puzzle piece we have to bring our time our talent and our treasure you were talking about bravery earlier with the opportunity. Do you know Dr. Ben Carson? Have you heard of him before? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the interview, uh, the opportunity to interview him. Oh, wow. And obviously, you know, he has, uh, he's very intelligent, probably one of the smartest men around, but he is full of wisdom. Something he and his wife have done for years is they actually read, I've heard of read a proverb a day. That's been very common. Mm -hmm. They actually read Proverbs every day. He and his wife, both of them read the book of Proverbs every day and they have wow. for years. Wow. And so uh, you see his intelligence, but he also has a lot of wisdom, wisdom. because that's what obviously Proverbs is about. Mm -hmm. um, and so the reason I bring that up is he said he, when he was on the campaign trail, when he was running in 2016, mm -hmm. he said he, he went across the country and he said he did not meet a lot of brave people. He said a lot mm -hmm. of people uh, were too scared to actually step up and use their yeah. voice. 
And he said, you can't have the land of the free if you don't have the home of the brave. Wow. And um, yeah, it really hit me at the time. I mean, it, it really stood out. And I thought that has been something that's been cons consistent. We, you know, we have done um, since 2000, since January, 2021, we've done almost 2,500 interviews. It's a lot of interviews since 2021. <laughs> we have talked to a lot of people. Yeah. And one thing that's been consistent that we have found in these interviews is that people were, especially when, you know, doctors were coming out about what was going on with COVID, FBI agents were whistleblowers. Like, you know, you were hearing so much, uh, you know, attorneys that were standing up, like, you know, Thomas Renz at the beginning when it seemed very dangerous, you know, to do yeah. that, like, yeah. like their life could be threatened. They were getting, you know, uh, letters and calls and people were threatening their life. Um, Clay yeah. Clark was receiving the same thing at that time. Yeah. Um, and one thing that was consistent is they said, um, we could no longer be silent that mm -hmm. no matter what happened to us, you know, and all of them had faith somewhere, you know, in the deal that they had yep. faith, you know? And so, you know, they would say we could no longer be silent. And it was almost like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, yes. you know, they were like, we will not bow. You can throw us in the fire, mm -hmm. but we will not bow. And I saw that. Yeah. And I think that's where we are um, as a country that we have to stand up. We cannot be silent. That's where our whole slogan, wake up, speak up and show up. That was not just a cute little cliche. It's a mandate that the yes. Lord is giving us that we cannot be silent. That's why our country is where it is today, that good is called evil and evil is called yeah. good because the plumb line of Jesus was taken out of all these different spheres of influence, whether it be entertainment or education or the political realm, even church and family, where the, the gospel has gotten so watered down that um, that this book is not even looked at as the living word of God. It's just maybe something that merely you could may maybe follow that's maybe good suggestions. No, this is the living word of God. Yeah. And we cannot, there can, the plumb line of Jesus has to be brought to every one of these spheres of influence. So when they were taking, you know, prayer out of schools, where were the people standing up and saying, no, you know, that's why we yeah. can't do that any longer. We have to be, if we want to be free, we have to be brave. This is so good. It's so good. I, I, you know, you're echoing so much of what I've been saying for the past few years. And for, for example, when, when it comes to this next phase of whatever it is that they want to do, president Trump came out the day before yesterday, I believe, and made a very strong statement about the next round of lockdowns pandemic. He said, we will not comply. And, yes. he, and, and then he said, any, any business that receives public funding, uh, any entity, uh, public, private, that receives public funding, I will withdraw it if they mandate any jibber jabbers or face coverings of any kind uh, for anybody in that in their premises that, that works for them. And I thought that was such a powerful statement. And you know, one of the things that I said often in frustration was, I don't want to walk into a store and be the only person without a mask ever again. And I don't want to get your thumbs up from behind your cart. I want you to join me in solidarity. It doesn't help if you hide behind your grocery cart or your handbag and give me this little thumbs up mm -hmm. because I need you to take the mask off and stand. Because if more people did that, then we would never have been in the situation to start with. And, and it would not have gone on because what we allow continues. And we saw that over and over and over again. And I think that that the one of the good outcomes of all of the pandemic was that it highlighted the lack of moral courage and fortitude that that has taken over this country, especially among people who are in positions of leadership. It wasn't that they just suddenly got cowardly. It manifested it. It put a magnifying glass on that and on their priorities because any church or pastor that was prioritizing their tax deduction over keeping their church open or was pri prioritizing their social standing mm -hmm. uh, over keeping their church open, that was very telling. And, and we saw the true colors of who people are. And I just, I, 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 what you're saying resonates so strongly mm -hmm. with what we've been talking about here on the channel and people have to understand it. You are going to be at risk 
if you stand up for the truth, you will be at risk. My, uh, my recent research into my revolutionary ancestors, I found that, you know, my ancestor, Mary Henkel was supplying goods to the Continental Army. And so she was on the kill list of the mm -hmm. British because she was, she was uh, selling supplies to the army. She wasn't actually, she didn't, wasn't in uniform. She wasn't fighting just for selling supplies to them. She was on the list and, and her family was at risk. All of them, her farm, her family, everything. And this is what people don't understand. Our country was founded by people who took a risk with their lives, their property, their sacred honor. They, they sacrificed it all. They were willing to sacrifice it all. And, and so when people tell me I, I had to do this so that I could travel, I had to take this thing mm -hmm. into my body so that I could go on this trip. I had to take it so I wouldn't get fired. I had to take it because people were pressuring me in my family. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you didn't have to. You, and I you, think people are being aware of that as yeah. well because we have the CBDCs coming out, which yeah. could possibly be the mark of the beast from yeah. everything that we're hearing. And um, and so God always gives options, but it may not be the most convenient. And being aware <laughs> yeah. of that, you know, yeah. because even, you know, with CBDCs, if, you know, if you have need government assistance or that's your social security or any of those different yeah. things, and the only way you can get it is through the CBDC, you know, then we should have, we need to learn from the mass. We need to learn from the vaccinations, all of those different things, which I think we're a foreshadowing of what we're getting ready to see and what they're going to try to push. Yeah. And we have to realize, okay, it may not be the most convenient, but that they're not our source. That was what I was talking about earlier mm, when yeah. David and I were struggling so much financially and we were in such a bad position. We really learned at that time that man and a job, they are never our source. The government, they're not our source. God is our source and he is an absolutely good father. That's something we have to realize as well, yeah. that he is absolutely good. There is nothing bad in God and he's also all powerful and we are his children. Just like you as a parent, you would, you would take care of your children He's going to take care of our children. And I think it's going to be a time like Goshen, um, or there's going to be a time where they, you know, you saw the oil in the Bible. It just kept reproducing itself. You mm -hmm. know, we're going to see those kind of things if we have faith to believe that that is possible. And we don't look as a, a scapegoat as somebody else is our source to take care of us. God is, and we cannot comply. You know, we're 212 days from the 2024 election, if it even happens, yeah. you know, but you go, you look back in 2020, what happened in 2020 <clears throat> with the summer of burning with COVID that came out if, and this is more pivotal for them because they really need, um, Biden, whoever else they're going to put in there, yeah. they really need them in there. And so they're going to do everything they can on their part to make that happen. Yes. And, and so we have to stand up. We have to partner with God. You know, God always partners with me and we can't sit back and think, oh, God's going to do this. We're going to partner with God um, in this process because he loves to do that. And we're going to see miracles happen, but we cannot wait back or hide behind the water cooler or hope the rapture comes, you know, for him to take care of us. We are victorious. Amen. So yes. we have to stand up as a victorious bride and partner with him. And God says, what I'm asking you to do is not complicated. It's, it's quite simple, but you have to be willing. Yes. And this is you have what to be brave. you have to be brave. You have to be willing. You have to be willing to stand out. You have to mm -hmm. be brave to be the one that everybody's looking at, even when it's uncomfortable for you, just like Gideon. Uh, when, when God came to him, he was hiding, he was hiding in the wine press and the angel came to him and said, greetings. Oh, valiant warrior. Yes. He's like, <laughs> and, who, me? And, 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 and so the angel was <laughs> prophesying into his life at that moment and calling him forth into his destiny. And so for everybody listening today, this is the call that God is, is calling to you. Greetings, oh, valiant warrior. He's prophesying into your life right now that you, it's you. He's calling you to be brave, not Mary Grace, not Stacy, uh, not the whited family. He's calling you to be brave and to walk into your destiny, to do what he's called you to do in this moment, in this time. And, and so if you take nothing away from what we've talked about today, please take that because we can't do this alone. You, you cannot rely on the people who show up on screen 
and talk to you and, and do interviews and share with you publicly what happens in the secret place in the privacy of your relationship with God goes into your public life. And it, it takes all of us. When General Flynn talks about local action, he's also talking about standing up on a local level, going into a store in freedom, mm -hmm. going into your workplace and refusing to bow down and comply. It's not just about joining this or that, which, which all of those things are important, but it's the daily, everyday choices that you make to stand in bravery, which is what Ben Carson talked about. He saw a lot of people, but not many brave people. And that's an indictment on, on us mm -hmm. as a nation because we were founded on bravery. We can't lose that. We can't allow it to be taken away from us. Um, Stacy, this time has really flown. It did. And I it wish, was my yeah, success. I know. I would, I would love to have you back because I feel like we're just touching the the tip of the iceberg here. We, I wanted to talk about prophecy, um, but I, but I would like to put a pin in that and come back and talk about it because you, for for listeners, just tell them really quickly about your weekly prophetic update uh, because a lot of people have heard about prophecy. We have praying medic on our show pretty frequently. And, and so people are familiar, but I think sometimes it's hard to keep up with everything. And you've done an incredible service of compiling prophetic words in the modern prophetic movement. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah so, um, you know, God is speaking, he hasn't fallen off the throne. He's not chewing his nails. He's not wondering <laughs> what's going to happen next. Yeah. And as the, as it gets darker, and as the chaos is just heightening, um, he is speaking very loud and letting us know exactly what's going to happen. And our job then is to then take those prophetic words, declare them and decree them and come into agreement yes. and faith that they're going to come to fruition. So what I do is I have a team of four ladies that every week they go through the prophetic. I'm going through the prophetic. They send me uh, what they are either reading or they're watching or listening to. And then the Lord and I sit down on Wednesday morning and then we compile the prophetic and we put it together and we look for things mm -hmm. that are the same, different categories right. of what prophets are saying that are exactly the same. And then I put together the show and we, we bring it out. So you're hearing maybe something from Hank Kuhneman, you know, that's in Omaha, Nebraska mm -hmm. at the same time as Tim Sheets, who's in Ohio saying identical things at the same yeah. time. And then I play the video so you can see it. And then we compile it. And um, the start, the show ended up initially at the beginning, it was like 30 minutes and now it's typically two hours yeah. just to watch what God is doing. Because again, as yeah. everything is shaking and everything's getting more chaotic, he's not, and his voice is yes. very loud and he's letting us know this is exactly what I'm going to do next. So that's every Wednesday at 11, 11 on it, Rumble. You can find it anywhere, but Rumble flyover can. Okay, good. It's really, and it's and like I said, guys, you know, there's so much to take in. There's so much people are busy. And so this is a really wonderful service that Stacy and her team are doing to help you narrow down. And it doesn't mean that you know, there's not more out there. Oh yeah. There's but, a lot more. Uh, it's just, and, yeah. And, and you, you know, definitely go where God leads you. If there's, if, if they're not highlighting a specific prophet for that day, it doesn't mean that they're not endorsing them or, or anything like that. It's just that whatever God is highlighting to them to pull together in that uh, compilation is what you're going to see. And you can go back in the archives. Uh, you can go to flyoverconservatives.com and you can see all of their shows. Uh, you guys are on what your sixth YouTube channel? <laughs> we are. Uh, yeah. YouTube, so we we upload so, sixty different platforms. Yeah, uh, we we are everywhere. We're like a whack a mole. They got us off of YouTube, but we just pop yeah. up over here. You know, yeah. so we are, yeah. we're everywhere. <laughs> so you'll find them. All you have to do is look, and and you can just go straight to the website and and also watch on there. Um, is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with today before we close out with our fun little commercial? Yep. I would just say that no matter what the future holds, no matter what it looks like, remember that you have a strong foundation with the Lord. And if you, um, if you haven't been carving out time, I highly encourage it because he is speaking not just through the prophets, but he's speaking to each one of us. If we are yes. sons and daughters of his, he is talking to us. And so we just have to learn how to hear him. But a lot of times you have to 
um, have space and time to allow that to happen. So I just encourage you to create that, to make that happen. If it's getting up a little earlier or, you know, finding a niche or time in your day that you are just devoting that to spending time with him, reading your Bible. I just encourage it because I think there's probably going to come a time. I don't think it'll last very long, but a short period of time where we might not be able to hear from other people where it might get dark for a while. Um, but during that time, you're not alone. You can hear the Lord. You don't have to depend on other prophets or other people. God will be speaking directly to you. So I just encourage you, just carve out that time, spend time with him because he wants to spend time with you. Amen. Yes. In the secret place. So Stacy Whited, Flyover Conservatives, thank you so much. It's just been an honor to have you here and just such a such a fun conversation. I really I, enjoyed I love it, Mary talking Grace. about these things, and I really want to uh, always encourage my audience. If you're new here, if you if you missed this, or if you just came in, uh, please go back and and listen from the beginning. Stacy has such an inspiring story. Uh, she and her family together have created a, a platform that reaches millions of people, and and so you can be encouraged that there are godly men and women who are bringing truth to the nations. And this is a, a, a couple and a family that's doing that. So thank you again, Stacy, for being part of our show today. And you're welcome back anytime. Take care and have a great weekend. Thank Everybody you, stick Grace. around. We've got a little message for you uh, before, after Stacy goes. Thanks again, Stacy. Have a great day. Okay, take care. Okay, guys, listen, wasn't that amazing? <laughs> Um, I have a, I have to go to here, but I just wanted to remind you as we talk about being prepared, one of the best ways that you can do that is just thinking about your food source, thinking about how you're going to feed your family, how you're going to take care of your money, uh, how you're going to take care of your health. And so the little commercials that I have planned for you are going to give you some options. And just remember that this channel is listener supported. That means that when you shop with our America First partners, you are supporting really great companies and you're also supporting Mary Grace TV. And if you are if you want to just check them all out, you can go to marygracemedia.com. You can click on the shopping tab. There's a lot of selections of companies that you can patronize. You can also join my email list there. And just in case you missed a show, if you if you miss the notifications, if you're not sure where to find me, right there on my website, marygracemedia.com. If you bookmark that and you save it, you can always click directly onto my shows directly from the website. Get on the mailing list. I send out a notification before I go live or when I upload material. And so you don't want to miss that. The other thing I want to remind you is that we have an incredible partner out in the middle of the country at griddownchowdown.com. They are putting together freeze-dried beef, American-grown, uh, jibber-jabber-free beef that you can store for up to 15 years. It's not jerky. It's not dehydrated. It's freeze-dried. And you can buy one pack. You can buy multiple packs. You can get on their subscription. Either way, it's a wonderful way to be prepared to feed your family should there come a time when you can't actually get access or when like during the pandemic, meat was rationed. And we've had these guys on the show before. They they talked about what they did. It's, it's just an incredible experience, uh, but they are sourcing their meats from ranchers and farmers out in the middle of the country, griddownchowdown.com. You can use promo code Mary Grace and you can get the, the best deals when you do that. I wanted to remind you guys also that General Flynn's movie is out. General Flynn was on the show last week. We had an, an amazing uh, conversation with him. And if you go to flynnmovie.com, here it is right here. If you go to flynnmovie.com, you can order the DVD. You can watch the movie. Um, you can also buy tickets to his to the live showings. He is traveling all over the country to over 40 cities. So if you go to flynnmovie.com, use promo code Mary Grace. If you want to do a group showing, contact me or contact the uh, Ms. General Flynn's team and tell them that Mary Grace sent you and you can get a license to stream the film to a bigger audience. So please do that. flynnmovie.com, promo code Mary Grace. And 
As always, if you want to get in touch with me, go to marygracemedia.com, info at marygracemedia.com. So that is it for me today. Stick around and find out about a couple more of our partners here on marygracemedia.com. And we will be back next week with some more great shows. Always, always check back through the previous post on my Rumble channel, on my Facebook and my YouTube, so that you can watch replays of videos that you might have missed. Sometimes they just don't show up. The last thing is when you go to watch a replay, if you like, subscribe, follow, leave a comment, that helps my shows to go uh, higher in the algorithm, higher in the feed, so that other people will find out about us and they'll know about the channel. That's a great way to get the word out. And then of course, share it and send it to people in messages. So thank you again, everybody for being here. It's just been a, a, a great honor and a privilege to talk to you today. And I appreciate all of you. And I am going to get out of the way and give you a little treat here with my commercial, but I have to get all my things out of the way, including myself. All right. We'll see you soon, everybody. Thanks for being here today and I am one of the biggest fans of MyPillow because they have quality America First products that are just made right here in the country and they last. We have the towels and I have a big issue with towels that shrink up after the first washing. The MyPillow towels stay color fast, they stay in shape and they stay that way for years after repeated washings. You can't ask for better, plus they actually work. When somebody buys from MyPillow using the promo code Mary Grace, that does a couple of things. It brings in a little bit of an affiliate commission to our company and it helps us to pay the bills, keep the lights on, keep the internet going, travel to places that we do to give you remote content. And it also helps MyPillow by giving them the support of people who genuinely value quality and companies that support real people right here in the United States and employ people all over this country and give back to this country. Go directly to MyPillow.com, use promo code Mary Grace, and buy everything you need for the home. There's no need to spend time shopping anywhere else. Go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Mary Grace, get your towels, pillows, sheets, robes, uh, dog beds, pet beds, cat beds, whatever it is that you want for the home, go to MyPillow.com, promo code Mary Grace. It's easy, don't waste your time anywhere else. MyPillow.com, promo code Mary Grace, thank you. Listen, your health is your best investment. We have a country to save, and we need people who are in the best shape of their lives, physically, mentally, spiritually. Why not connect with a team who cares about you on every single level from the inside out? Official Synapse is that team. OfficialSynapse.com. It's official, S-Y-N-A-P-S-E.com. Tell them Mary Grace sent you, and they will treat you like family. If you're like most people, you really probably haven't thought about transferring your paper dollars into physical gold and silver. But I wanna tell you a story. My friend, Andrew Sorcini over at Beverly Hills Precious Metals, he recently went overseas and he wanted to buy a watch. He likes, he likes fine watches. He took three currencies with him. He took gold, he took Bitcoin, and he took American dollars. Now there used to be a time when the American dollar was king. I remember that when I used to travel overseas, Everybody wanted dollars. The people that he was dealing with would not take his dollars because the dollar is so devalued around the world. They wanted the gold. So this is what I recommend to you. I want you to think about this. If you have cash in the bank, if you have an investment account that you have worked hard for years to accumulate, consider the value of converting that money into physical gold and silver. You're not buying something that's losing value. You're changing those worthless dollars into a tangible physical asset that will go up in value, which it has done historically. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to bh-pm.com. The first thing you're gonna do is schedule that free consultation. Second thing, just think rationally about this, pray about it, go to the Lord, see what the best decision for you and your family is. I can't tell you that. I don't wanna pressure you into that. What I do know is don't be scared, be prepared. And so the third thing you wanna do is make a decision 
for you and your family. Make a decision, take action. bh-pm.com. Let them know Mary Grace sent you. I just want to give a shout out to everybody who watches this show. Thank you for being a participant. Thank you for being a loyal audience member. I just want to remind you, if you like what you've seen, please share this and don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and also sign up for my email list so you never miss a show.